Hello, how are you fine folks doing? We are back with a brand new tutorial on a new series where we're going to be making a retro style 2D platformer game. Now before we get into today's tutorial, quick note on the giveaway that we're currently running on the channel. For those of you who are not aware, to celebrate 100 subscribers, we are giving away some Roblox gift cards. All you need to do to enter is make sure you subscribe to the channel and join our Discord. Link will be below in the description. Uh, but it's awesome to see there's so many of you guys already taking part. Uh, stay tuned because we'll be announcing the winners not this weekend, but the following weekend. So in around 10 days time, I believe that is, something like that. Anyway, into this video. So if we want to make a platformer style game, the first thing we're going to need is some platforms we're going to need to make a map for ourselves so let's go ahead and get building we'll add in a part and this can be our grass just make a thin little block uh, we'll make sure we're anchoring the parts of course as we go along and we're going to need a spawn as well we'll put that on the top here put that round about there and then we're also going to add in I think a layer of dirt underneath sort of a Mario Super Mario esque look is kind of what we're going for here make that brown what will look good for that let's try some cobble or pebble okay right that's the map we've got so far then uh, let's make sure it's all anchored again yep and we'll go ahead and start testing the game then make sure it's all working so there we are, fantastic. We've got our player loaded in. We've got our 2D map. It's all looking fantastic. But yeah, we need to get scripting because this is not 2D at the moment. We can move our camera around wherever we like. We can move in all directions. We have got a lot to do. So the first thing we're going to do is control the camera. Now, if we head into workspace here, we see there's this camera object and it's got a bunch of properties we can look at. Um, it's currently set to be subject humanoid, which is our character here. Uh, it's a custom type, but I think that just means it's following Roblox's default script. I'm not sure why they put custom, but it is. Uh, we could change it so it was, uh, well, I don't know, let's see what happens if we put it on orbital. Uh, it's pretty, pretty similar, really. Um, <laughs> Anyway, we've got like a field of view. Uh, we can change that down to 20, for example, and we get very little in the frame. And if we put it up to 120, we get loads in the frame. Now, if we put this back to attach, and instead of attaching it to the player, we go and attach it to this wall here, you'll notice I can move the player up and down uh, let's put that back to custom. You can move the player around, but it's not going to follow the player. Instead, it's fixed on this wall. So with all that in mind, let's stop this testing and go ahead and create our own custom script. Now, if we go on the Roblox Wiki, that's the best place to start off if you want to create anything. Always check the Roblox Wiki. So we'll head over there and there's a bunch of information on the different properties, some of them we've just looked at. And how to work with the camera, one of the ways it suggests is creating your own script. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go to start a player, start a player script, and we're going to add in a local script. Now we're going to name this local script, not just local script, we'll rename it to camera script. And we can delete that. It's very important that it's named exactly camera script because now if we go ahead and we test play again, what we should see happen is our camera is just going to appear in the middle of the map and it's no longer going to be following the player. In fact, I can move my little character over here and our character's still on the map, but it's not following the player. That's because the script that we've just added is completely overwritten the old camera scripts. Now our script is currently empty, so let's go ahead and start writing it out. 
the first thing we're going to need is some variables. So we'll define one for the player first of all. We'll put uh, local player equals game dot players dot local player. Then we're going to need one for the camera. Local camera equals workspace dot. Now we could just put camera here, uh, which would be correct because the camera object is inside workspace. But if we read the Roblox wiki, we'll notice that it does tell you to refer to the workspace, uh, the camera in the workspace as current camera rather than just camera. This is to avoid any confusion. So I'll put current camera instead. Uh, the next thing we're going to need to do is start defining some of them camera subjects or the camera properties. So we can start out with camera, we can say dot camera subject and we want it to follow the player's character. So we could put player dot character and we need to attach it to something on the character's model the whole model that makes up our character with the head and the different uh, legs and arms. So let's put the head to start off with. And there's something that we're forgetting. If we go back and play, we'll notice we get a little error message and it says attempt to index field character, a nil value. The reason for that is that the character hasn't actually been added to the game yet. Uh, at the time that the fourth line of this, this script is running. So before we define any of these properties, we need to make sure that the player's character has all loaded in. So let's add a few lines to check that. We're going to put player dot character added. This is actually an event. So when this event is triggered, what we want to do is we want to wait until this event is fulfilled. And then we're going to go to the next line. We're going to add another condition. We're going to say player dot character. So now the character has been added. We can refer to this. And we're going to say dot uh, well colon, another function, wait for child. And inside this function, we need to supply an argument for it. So we're going to put wait for the head to load. And if we go ahead and we run that again, we should hopefully see no errors. But of course, the camera's not working yet either. So we need to go ahead and create a few more of those properties. The next thing we need to define is the camera type. So let's say camera dot camera type equals, now we want to set to attach. Now we could just put attach like that, but that's probably not gonna work. What we should really do is use something called enums. Now enums are kind of like Robloxes, uh, lots of Roblox values are stored within enums. We've got uh, brick colors, we've got colors in there, I think, somewhere. We've got chat colors anyway. But what we want is uh, camera type. So we put enum dot camera type dot, and then we see all the different types that's only available to us just to automatically select. So we want attach in this case. Uh, then we want, let's define the camera field of view camera dot field of view um, in this case let's set to the default for now it's just 70 and the final thing we need to do is the camera dot c frame this stands for coordinated frame and it's a combination of both the position value and its uh, its angle so that's the coordinated frame I'm going to set that to equal c frame dot new and that's going to be uh, let's use players head to start off with player dot character dot head and we'll take the c-frame value of the head to start off with now if we go ahead and play now hopefully what we should get is the camera appearing exactly where the player's head is nope we've got an error here bad argument to new expected vector three expected got C frame. Ah, so we shouldn't be defining C frame. We should be defining position here. My bad. Position. Put that in. Then play. And yet yeah, now we've got the <laughs> the cameras appeared exactly where my head is, and so we're looking through um, 
my face, my uh, hat, which looks a bit odd. Uh, let's go back and we can add in, well, it's not actually add. We want to multiply that by another C frame, C frame dot new, and we're gonna say put zero, zero, 10. So we're gonna it's uh, go back another 10 studs. So if we play now, we should be 10 studs away from our player and we can see it a bit better. Now, of course, because it's our custom um, script, we can't zoom in or out or anything. We can't move the camera around. And if I go to move the player, it's not gonna follow the player anymore either because we've not told it to do that. All we've told it to do is to go to the position of the character's head when it first starts. So what we really need to do is add some kind of loop. So it's always updating the position. Now you might think you'd want to write something like a while true loop. We could try that. Uh, if we go ahead and play now. Well, you we won't want to do while true because you're going to crash it. That was dumb of me. What we would want to do is uh, while wait uh, 0 0.1, so it updates every 0.1 of a second. And if we go ahead and play that now, you'll notice it does follow the character along, but it's rather juddery, a lot of buffering in and out. We don't really want that. What we do want is it to update on every single frame. Now, the best way to do that is to use a Roblox inbuilt function called uh, render stepped or uh, run service and sorry and whenever a frame passes it will update and so this doesn't matter whether you're on a slower system that's only running at say 20 frames second or a faster system that's running 60 frames second this will update on every single frame so I've just copy and pasted that in because it is a bit all to write at once but essentially we're getting the service run service and then it has a event called stepped and which is each frame and once it's stepped for a, a frame it connects with this function and it runs this line so if we go ahead and we play that what we should get is the camera following the player through the map and it's running a lot smoother now there is a little bit of bobbing up and down. The reason for that is because we've set it to the head. So let's go ahead and we'll change that. And instead of using the head, let's use something called humanoid root part. And we need to swap that in there, there, and there. And we go and play again. And hopefully that's a lot smoother. It's not moving up and down anymore. Uh, let's make a few more changes here. Let's narrow the field of view a little bit. We'll put that down to 40. And we're going to, instead of just being 10 studs away from the character, let's make that 30 studs away. Go back and play. We've got a narrower field of view, a bit further away, and it's all starting to look a lot more 2D. Now, of course, I can still move forwards and backwards. I can move off the map and we've not got much of a game just yet but it's starting to take form um, that's probably me being me talking enough for today's video we're gonna look at how to do everything else for our game uh, in next time but hopefully that's got you started for today hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe and join us for the next part thanks guys stay tuned